Hi, this is K from Porcupine RC. In this video, I'm going to focus on only the automatic antenna tracking function of S12 RC ground station, and I'll explain a little bit the theory behind. For the AAT working accurately, we need to do only two things. First, calibrate the compass for the Android phone. Just open Google Map, press my location button, then make a figure 8 like this for several times. The blue beam on the map will become narrow and point to a right direction. It can be done within 10 seconds. And remember close the Google Map when it's done. The second thing you need to do is to set home location. With a GPS module directly plugged to the GPS port of the receiver, you will see the number of satellites in the ground station app. Once you got enough satellites, preferably more than 10, you may simply press set via aircraft button, so the app will consider the current location of the drone as the home location of the AAT as well as the go home arrow on the FPV screen. If your home location is keep moving, for example if you are on a cruise ship or on a yacht or in a car, you may press keep tracking my location. Then the app will constantly update the home location with the real-time GPS location of your Android phone. If you find that the AAT aims a little too high, what you need to do is just to trim up the home altitude with the up trimming button of the left side stick while holding the VTX button. Likewise, if it aims too low, you can trim down the home altitude with the down trimming button of the left side stick while holding the VTX button. You can do it any time during the flight. It is because the altitude of the GPS position may not be very accurate when you set the home location. You can wait longer for the altitude of the GPS position getting more accurate or trim it directly during the flight. Or you can even ignore the inaccuracy because the farther you fly the drone away, the less significant the home altitude inaccuracy will become. Also, if you find that the AAT is not accurate enough in horizontal direction, you can trim the X direction offset with the left or right trimming button of the left side stick while holding the VTX button during the flight. The AAT should point exactly towards your drone no matter how you move, unless it reaches its maximum range of rotation. If so, you just need to turn your body to keep the AAT moves in its working range. So you can fly your drone few kilometers away in all directions, 360 degrees around you. If you want to use your own high gain antenna, you may need to adjust the movement range of the AAT mechanism so it won't hit anything. Although there is always antenna with higher gain, bigger size and narrower beam width, but for a handheld device with everything, the original dual band patch antenna of S12 ground station should be the best antenna you can get. It is already the biggest and with highest gain for a handheld device. And every single piece of antenna is tuned up by a professional antenna manufacturer. Antenna gain is 14 dBi and beam width is 15 degree. But why do we even need a high gain antenna? Here is a simplified example. Assuming transmit power is 100 mW. With 14 dBi antenna gain, it is equivalent to 2511 mW transmit power with 0 dBi antenna gain. So it is about the same as you put a 2.5 watt power amplifier on both sides. One on the drone and one on the radio for bidirectional data communication. Plus another 2.5 watt PA for FPV channel. No need to mention the legitimacy and the extra weight of the two extra PA on the drone. Interference between the radio and FPV channel could also be a big problem for small drone. In short, using high transmit power is not a good solution for long-range FPV system, or at least before adding PA, you must first have a good antenna. However, the higher the antenna gain, the narrower the bandwidth, the more difficult to point the antenna towards the drone manually. That's why we need automatic antenna tracker. Though it is not necessary in some cases, especially if you fly to a single direction or if you don't have any plan to fly out of sight. In the previous range test video, I have showed you that it can easily fly several kilometers away with only 100 mW power for back and forth radio data and telemetry data transmission, and only 200 mW power for FPV video transmission. And with the built-in flight controller, everything are integrated into one single electronic device. But don't just look at the range of the system. In all the flight test video, I was not flying blind during the whole flight. That means in every moment, I knew all the details of the flight and FPV system. I knew where the drone was. I 
I knew the drone battery level, I knew the direction to fly back home, I knew exactly how well the drone was receiving my control data, and how well was the ground station receiving the FPV signal, and I knew when I had to fly back and where I shouldn't fly close to. When you know the real time situation of your aircraft, you always know when something is going wrong and you can do something to correct it. Even if you fly in manual mode, you can avoid a crash in most situations. That's all for this video. In the near future, I'm going to do something new with our ground station system. If you are interested in what I'm going to do, please like this video and subscribe.